Good morning, everyone. Our opening song is Loving and Forgiving. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. All my being, bless the Lord, bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. God forgives us all our sins, healing those who live in pain, saving us from final death, God fills us with goodness and love. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather on this feast of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, we ask her intercession as we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Maria Page, Tony Romalo, and the deceased members of the Cardoso family, and those in our Book of Life. Gathering our prayers into one, let us recognize our sinfulness before our God and turn to him for mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You were happy to die on the cross to free us from our sin. Christ, have mercy. Now risen from the dead, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, Grant through her intercession that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and those who are afflicted. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. In my vision, I, John, heard the voice of the Lord saying, And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these are the words of him who has seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your works. You have a name of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is at the point of death, for I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Yet you have still a few persons in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. If you conquer, you will be clothed like them in white robes, and I will not blot your name out of the book of life. I will confess your name before my Father and before his angels. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the origin of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich. I have prospered and I need nothing. You do not realize that you are wretched and pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Therefore, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich, and white robes to clothe you and to keep the shame of your nakedness from being seen, and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. I reprove and discipline those whom I love, 
Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you, and you with me. To the one who conquers, I will give a place with me on my throne, just as I myself conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The word of the Lord. Those who are victorious, I will place on my throne. Those who are victorious I will place on my throne. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue. Those who are victorious I will place on my throne. Those who do do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord. Those who are victorious, I will place on my throne. Those who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent, those who do these things shall never be moved. Those who are victorious, I will place on my throne. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God first loved us and sent his Son to take away our sins. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said of him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. What's beautiful of the story of Zacchaeus is that Jesus continues to recognize the one in whom nobody can be bothered with, the one who seems invisible, the one who in the eyes of society is just another person. And yet Jesus stops. Zacchaeus, come down. I wish to have dinner with you today. That's how God is with us. Those of you who feel forgotten, alone, isolated, you are not alone. You are never alone. Jesus stops and pays attention. Jesus always knows our heart. When the rest of the world fails to recognize, that's exactly who Jesus pays attention to. In all times, in all places, whether our needs are great or small. And so these readings invite us also to an understanding of authentic Christian living. Because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You do not realize how you are. Therefore, be earnest and repent. The words here of St. John given to us in the book of Revelation are very clear as to how we are to live. How many of us are lukewarm? How many of us fail to stand up for our faith when family members and friends make comments? We become afraid. If God really means something to us, are we willing to stand up? Because when something affects us to our core, Does it not bother us when somebody talks badly about it? 
Oh, don't talk about my mother. I'll attack you, right? They can say anything else. What is it about our relationship with our mother that even when somebody says a yo mama joke or something, we get defensive? What about Jesus? Why don't I stand up for Jesus? I'm comparing my family to the King of Kings? This is the one to whom I wish to have eternal life with? And yet at my first experience, I'm like Peter at the fire denying his very existence? My brothers and sisters, it's time for us to move from being lukewarm to hot. We need to be hot for God. We need to stand up for injustice. It's not about being popular. It's about doing the will of Jesus and how God is calling us to love. He's calling us to be that voice of reason for the world. And he's also calling us to find the Zacchaeuses in our life, the people on the periphery, that everyone else is too busy to help. Who are the Zacchaeuses that Jesus is calling us out of the trees to respond towards? Let's actually pay attention and let's respond as Jesus does. Let us pray. As we gather around the throne of God, we humbly lay our petitions before him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the church around the world may continue to grow and prosper. Under the protection of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let us pray that all who govern may be led by the Holy Spirit in strength, courage, and right judgment, we pray. Let us pray that the Lord in his mercy may help all who are in financial need, especially those who have lost employment because of the pandemic, we pray. Let us pray for all of us gathered here as St. Joseph. May we grow in spiritual richness through the grace of the Eucharist, we pray. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our great diocese, we pray. Let us pray for an end to the spread of the coronavirus for all those affected by the virus, that they may be healed by Jesus, the divine physician, for all frontline and medical workers, that God may keep them safe, for researchers to find a vaccine, and for all who have died as a result of the virus and their families left behind, that God may be their comfort and peace, we pray. Let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially Maria and Tony, those in our book of life, and all who have died. May they return to the one who gave them life and worship God on the throne forever and ever, we pray. And for all the intentions we hold within the silence of our hearts, God, you are worthy of all glory and honor and power. Look favorably on us who gather and worship today and answer the prayers we bring before you through Christ our Lord. St. Elizabeth of Hungary, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of the water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity 
may by the example of St. Elizabeth be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servants, Maria and Tony, and those in our book of life, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with St. Elizabeth of Hungary, whose feast day we celebrate today, with St. John, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. I invite those who are receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your holy people. Through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Good and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, rich in love. God remembers not our sins, forgiving and loving is God. Loving and forgiving are you. O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. As heaven soars above the earth, so great the love of God for us. As far as east is from the west, the Lord takes our sins from us. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. God bless you. Have a good day.